Kentucky, unfortunately, has a huge rise in obesity and uh, fatty liver disease. Part of it is the economy, part of it is access to care, part of it is education. By some reports, it's uh, number one in the nation in pediatric obesity. We kind of call it new disease. I think the first time was diagnosed or described maybe about 25, 30 years ago. In Kentucky, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease rates in children is believed to be among the highest in the country. For a disease that's often seen in older patients, it's incredibly surprising. Before the year 2000, there were only a handful of documented cases of pediatric fatty liver disease. Today, millions are affected. There's no clear reason for the rise, though some experts theorize that there's a mismatch between our genetics and highly processed foods. So non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is a liver manifestation of metabolic syndrome. So in that setting, liver accumulates fat when normally it should not accumulate that amount of fat. A little fat is normal in a liver, but more than 5% slows down the organ's ability to filter toxins from the body. If it's not treated, can lead to more severe complications, fibrosis, which in other words, means scarring of the liver. And if this is also progressing, can lead to uh, hepatocarcinoma, so cancer and kind of a terminal disease of the liver. It's a major problem that has been exacerbated by uh, diet and uh, inactivity. So in people have a genetic predisposition to uh, putting on weight constant supply of calories in today's society and lack of exercise exacerbates fatty liver disease. At the University of Kentucky's Pediatric Fatty Liver Clinic, doctors have seen the number of patients boom in recent years, from dozens of patients a year when it first opened, to now hundreds. Above nine is concerning for significant scarring. Yeah, arriba de nueve is algo preocupante para una cicatrización considerable. Yeah, so his number is 12. I wanted to set up a clinic that would help children with, uh, with obesity and specifically who have secondary complications in, in their liver uh, based on their uh, obesity status. We expanded the team. We have also dietitian as part of the BMI clinic team. Uh, we start collaborating with other specialists. So we grew as a team and of course we <laughs> grew the number of patients that we are evaluating and treating. Lifestyle intervention, healthy dietary habits, physical activity, good sleep hygiene, and decreased sedentary time, extremely important. Angela Woods was familiar with fatty liver disease because of her job, but it was still a shock when her 11-year-old was diagnosed. Her daughter is now 15, and the family is still coming to terms with how it's changed their lives. I'm a physician assistant in primary care, so I was unfortunately very well aware of fatty liver. Also, my father had non-alcoholic fatty liver disease um, and actually passed away in 2019. And she was diagnosed before then, but he passed away from cirrhosis. So when it comes to your child having liver enzymes elevated and being, you know, high like that, you get a little worried. I don't really remember it a lot, like being diagnosed, but recently, like coming last year and stuff, it made me really nervous because I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know what would happen in a couple years. It just made me nervous. Just whatever you typically, you, you love chicken. Chicken, chicken and rice, is, I would say, or salad. After cutting out soda and making other changes to her diet, Sydney was able to improve her liver function. But it's not easy for most families to buy less processed foods. You're a working family, two parents working, two kids in school, trying to plan a healthy meal and make a healthy meal is a challenge because the processed sugars and, and the higher fat foods just seem to come around a lot easier. They're more available, they're cheaper. And especially in, we live in rural America, it's hard to find you know specific stores that might cater more to a healthier lifestyle. It's easy to shift the blame and say, well, if patients would do X, Y, and Z, then, then they could get better. But um, a lot of times is that, that our environment is contributing heavily to 
fatty liver disease, and uh, some patients just don't have resources to overcome those challenges. Some doctors think weight loss medications could help, but they're incredibly expensive. Health insurance often doesn't cover them to help manage fatty liver disease. It looks like insurance did not approve That's it right. and was not even making to the prior authorization. It's certainly very difficult for people to get uh, some of the newest and latest drugs. Uh, part of the problem is expense. Uh, some of the newer drugs are very expensive. But on the other hand, they're very effective. So certainly drugs that uh, are shown to decrease obesity, um, are, there are newer ones coming out almost on a, on a monthly basis, and they're very effective at lowering blood uh, glucose levels and decreasing uh, body weight. The problem, of course, is getting access to as many people as possible. With the prevalence of fatty liver disease mirroring the rise of obesity in the U.S., doctors urge early screening of children, especially as the condition has also been linked to other illnesses once thought of as mostly impacting adults. We are facing that situation where it's kind of a vicious cycle, and I feel like if we are not acting now and being more aggressive in treating this disease, uh, we're going to end up with future generation with worse obesity. Eating healthy requires time, requires money, and so not everyone uh, has those resources. So it's uh, in part societal burden for us to, to do better. Fatty liver disease per se and obesity go hand in hand, and it is mostly uh, preventable. So we would like to get that information out to the public because public education is, is going to be key in preventing this tide of fatty liver disease that we're now seeing in the population.